provisions, uh, as this is a virtual platform, we must uh, keep in mind some technical thing. Uh, number one, please, I would request all the participants, do not unmute yourself unless you are one of the speakers. All queries can be posted in the chat session. You can turn on your video if you like. And you can mute, uh, unmute your microphone when you will speak something. So with these uh, words, I now request the organizing committee secretary, Dr. Doipayan Sina, to say something about this program. Sir, over to you, please. Uh, am I audible, Tariq? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Perfectly audible. Uh, thank you, Tariq, uh, for handing over me the speech. Uh, I heartily welcome all the resource persons, speaker, eminent speakers, and the uh, participants to the international webinar in the world of plants, and that is organized by our botany department of Government General Degree College. First of all, I would wish to thank Professor Sheikh Bokhtiaruddin of University of Chittagong for being kind enough to join the inaugural session. I also wish to thank uh, Madam Shahana Choudhury, who is also from Bangladesh. He's also there in the inaugural session. I also heartily welcome Professor Dev Dulal Banerjee, who is the special guest uh, of the inaugural session, and Dr. Shubrata Raha, who is also the special guest of the inaugural session. I welcome you all, and I dearly hope this ne next 48 hours or, uh, would be a very highly scientific uh, interaction between in all of us and a very and we are having a lineup of very eminent resource person who would enrich us with their uh, presentations and with their uh, knowledge uh, um, from the botanical point of view now i would like to request uh, our chief patron and uh, the officer in charge to kindly deliver his introductory lecture and I would like to request Professor Tariq Ali also to hand over the session to Professor uh, Nimai Chan Mashanto who is the Chief Patron and Officer in Charge. Over to Tariq Ali, please. Thank you uh, Dr. Sina for this kind words. Now uh, I would request uh, the Chief Patron of the program and our Honorable YC Sir, Dr. Nimai Chan Mashanto to say something about the program. Sir, please. Thank Dr. Ali. Uh, very good morning, everybody. On this sweet morning, we all meet in this virtual platform to participate in the international webinar on the world of plants, its impact on the indigenous people, society, and biosphere, organized by Department of Botany with the help of other faculty members of Government General Degree College, Mohanpur, Postim Medinipur. I like to confirm my warm greetings to all participants of this webinar. I welcome you all heartily on behalf of this government college as well as myself. I like to share some of my experience about this college. Mohanpur Government General Degree College is one of the youngest general degree college established at the remote village of Kharagpur subdivision of Postim Medinipur district, West Bengal. And it is nearer to the state Odisha. The college had started its academic journey by 2015 with very poor infrastructure, but with devotion to nurture the poor, needy, but thirstful teenagers with this locality. With the limited resource, our faculty members are trying heart and soul to foster the young blood, to make them a real literary scholar and a good citizen of the country. On this two days webinar, so many reputed, illustrious and distinguished scientists educationists and other eminent persons of repute of different fields will deliver their valuable lectures and share their innovative ideas among the participants. We all shall be enriched with knowledge 
about our native plants, that is plants indigenous to a given area in geologic time. These plants are native to a particular area. We have many indigenous species having unique properties used to develop specialized drugs, which is our lifesaver. They help to reduce air pollution, provide shelter and food for wildlife. Birds, the inhabitant of the native plants, act as a pest controller, while the garden provides them with feeding, breeding, nesting, and roosting. Indigenous plants promote biodiversity and stewardship, that is taking care of our natural heritage and ecosystem. Indigenous plants are so important to native people for their nutrition, day-to-day -day foods, drugs, shelter, and many, are, many other regions also. So we have to acquire knowledge much more about these plants to shape ourselves, our life. If our natural resources are lost, we are going to be threatened. So the topic of this webinar is very much important for our society, especially during this great pandemic situation. So last but not the least, I again convey my heartfelt gratitude and a profound appreciation for all participants. I am thankful to our eminent resource persons who will deliver their valuable ideas in this virtual platform. Wishing a grand success of this webinar and pray to God so that all of us can maintain our safe and healthy life and stay out of harm's way. Thanks you all. Thank you, Dr. Masanto, for your inspiring words. Now, uh, we feel privileged that we have resource persons and audience from different parts of the country and from our nearing country as well. We especially feel ourselves privileged to have with us in this session Dr. Sheikh Bokhtiaruddin from Chittagong University. Sir, uh, I would I'd like to request you to say something about our initiative, if you kindly unmute and say something about uh, this initiative that we have taken. Dr. Bokhtiaruddin. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Because I have problem with the network. I have no electricity. I am going on that. Hello, sir. Dr. Bukhtiruddin has left the meeting because of some network issue, I think. Vipan, sir, have our resource person of the first station joined? Yeah, Dr. Raha is uh, supposed to join within a few minutes. I think uh, Professor Devdulat Banerjee is there with us. Sir, uh, are you here? Are you there? Hello? Hello? I, I, I think I need to contact you. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, Professor Devdulal Banerjee is there. Uh, Tariq, can you kindly uh, initiate the program now? And I want Please, I would also like to welcome one of my teachers who have just joined, Professor Esar Yadav from the Shivaji University, Kolapur. Welcome you, sir, in this event. And now I hand Thank over you. A warm welcome you, sir. And a welcome, uh, Professor Devdulal Banerjee, to this event. And Tariq, please initiate the session. Okay, okay, sir. So uh, before we start the technical sessions, we have a special session before all this. Now, in this special session, we have two speakers. Uh, Professor Devdulal Banerjee, uh, Professor and Head, Department of Botany and Forestry, Vidyasagar University, and Dr. Subrato Raha, Head, Department of Botany, Sidhu Kano Birsa University, Purulia. This special session will be chaired by our Honorable Officer in Charge, Sir, uh, Dr. Nimai Masanto, Sir. So, uh, uh, I would request this session actually will run uh, till. Uh, 10.25. Uh, now, I would like to request Dr. Masanto to, Masanto to take the charge of the session. Uh, over to Dr. Masanto. 
Sir, you are not audible. Please unmute yourself. is not coming because the uh, you you have to mute unmute yourself sir yes now am i audible yes yes now it's clear uh it's my great privilege to introduce professor debdulal banerji professor banerji presently serving as head department of both and forestry vidyasagar university He did his postdoctoral work under Professor Gary Strobel at Montana State University, USA, as a Boy Scout Fellow in Endophytes Biology. He is the recipient of award like gold medal in both UG and PG, ceremony gold medal, CSIR NET with S. P. Mukherjee Fellowship, Asian Molecular Biology Organization Fellowship. to attend a training on molecular biology at tokyo japan dst fellowship to attend a meeting of nobel laureates and students at lindau germany dst international travel support to attend international congress on plant pathology at turin italy bojcast fellowship to do advanced research at montana state university usa shikha ratna award to 2020 from department of higher education government of west bengal he visited countries like italy germany usa south korea japan uae etc in different academic assignments published more than 60 papers in international journal of report and total impact factor of publications are more than 40 presently he h index of publication is 25 and i10 index is 40 published more than 6 books chapter in springer and crc press publication and a book from Bid vidyasagar university publication division submitted more than 25 sequences in gene bank completed four research project as principal investigator currently serving as editorial board member in microbiology insight journal of advanced microbiology journal of pure and applied microbiology frontiers in microbiology etc 10 candidates got phd degree under supervision and eight working in different fields of microbiology and plant microbiome interaction professor banerjee will deliver a lecture today titled plant microbiome and its importance in human welfare professor banerjee please so over to professor banerjee uh, thank you Dr. Uh, Masanto, for kind introduction. I also thank Dr. Payan Sinha and other faculty members of uh, the department and all the organizers. Uh, they really uh, uh, did a hard work to organize uh, such an uh, international event. Uh, we have with us several uh, research persons from uh, India as well as from Bangladesh. Uh, I uh, must thank all of them. Uh, now, I am uh, actually showing my presentation. Is it visible? Yes, sir. It's visible. Yes, sir. Visible. Oh, okay. Please go on. so uh, i am going to deliver my uh, talk on plant uh, microbiome and its importance in uh, human welfare so first of all uh, what are uh, uh, different uh, plant uh, microbiomes in which part of the plants uh, they are actually uh, available uh, if we consider three different zones of the plants uh, actually the number of microbes uh, is higher on those particular regions that is uh, 
first one is the rhizosphere it is the uh, zone between uh, the root and the soil so it's a particular uh, uh, type of environment where uh, the microflora is quite different from other parts of the soil uh, because uh, uh, from plant tissues uh, some lipid comes out and which attracts uh, the microbes therefore the microbial population uh, is higher in this particular region and uh, composition of microbes is also different and these uh, rhizospheric microorganisms they actually uh, um, uh, somehow influences the plant uh, growth also they uh, sometimes helps uh, the plants uh, to survive and second one is uh, endosphere that means throughout the plant uh, there we can found uh, so, some uh, types of microorganisms uh, maybe uh, they may be beneficial or sometimes they may be uh, pathogenic but somehow they remain within the plant and third one is the phylosphere that is the uh, uh, leaf surface because uh, we know that uh, uh, leaf uh, surface contains some cuticular layer uh, around uh, its surface but sometimes uh, actually cracks are formed in these surfaces and uh, through which some leaches comes out from the uh, leaf tissues and that actually attracts different microorganisms so that uh, the microflora a unique microflora is formed within these uh, leaf tissues and sometimes it was uh, found that uh, uh, that uh, this uh, leaf microflora they also influences plant growth sometimes even some uh, nitrogen fixing microorganisms uh, were uh, found on the, uh, those particular sites. Uh, so these are uh, three different uh, zones. Uh, still, I am concentrating my uh, 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 my talk on uh, the second one, that is uh, on endosphere. So uh, how plant microbe interaction actually influences uh, plants? Uh, here I have shown that uh, they help in uh, squish adaptation. Uh, they sometimes uh, uh, act as biofertilizer, biopesticide. In uh, below ground interaction, also the microbes have uh, some role. Uh, they have uh, some role on uh, in different environmental interactions. So, in uh, different ways, uh, these microorganisms they helps the plants and they increases their survival uh, capacity also. So, uh, among these in. Uh, 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 microorganism which remains there in the uh, plants, uh, uh, they are actually called as uh, the endophytes. And these endophytes are actually fungi or bacteria, which uh, all are part of their life cycle, invade the tissues of living plants and cause unapparent and uh, symptomatic uh, infection entirely within the plant tissues, but causes uh, no symptoms of disease. So, uh, uh, whenever we uh, we observe any symptom within the plant uh, because of infection by uh, any bacteria or fungi, that is uh, that uh, microorganism is called as pathogenic. But whenever they remain within the plant, but we are not observing uh, their um, appearance, any symptom uh, from outside, they are called as uh, endophytes. And these are the microorganisms. They are uh, actually found in almost every plant on this earth. So uh, microbe and plant relationship uh, through this uh, endophytic relationship, uh, that is everywhere uh, uh, from lower group of uh, uh, plants to uh, higher group of plants, everywhere we can found such type of interactions. And in some cases, uh, their presence is very much essential. Otherwise, uh, in absence of them, uh, sometimes some plant uh, cannot uh, survive also. And these organisms uh, reside uh, within the living tissues of the host plant and uh, they do uh, so in a variety of relationship uh, ranging from symbiotic to pathogenic. Why we are telling pathogenic? We are telling endophytes still pathogenic. Sometimes some uh, people, they say that uh, these endophytes, they are the latent pathogens. That means whenever they uh, uh, they get uh, weak, uh, 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 actually, uh, uh, plants uh, uh, immune system when becomes weak, then sometimes 
these endophytes may express themselves as pathogens. Therefore, they are sometimes called as latent pathogens. And these endophytes, they may contribute to their host plant by producing different substances. They provide uh, protection and ultimately they help in the survival values of the plants. Uh, endophytes, they also help in uh, phytoremediation. We know that plants sometimes they remediate different types of toxicants present in the soil and uh, part of that uh, uh, the remediation process uh, is contributed by plants but uh, the endophytes present within them may also have uh, the role in, in degradation of those components or uh, volatilization or removal in different processes they uh, actually uh, takes uh, part and this is the, the zone of uh, interaction within the root uh, tissue if you see this uh, uh, root region, the apical cap and the uh, meristematic uh, tissue, and in this particular region, the tissue is so soft that any microorganism may penetrate the root cells. So through this region, actually the uh, endophytic microorganisms, sometimes they uh, invade from uh, uh, soil to uh, the root zone. And through this, they actually go through uh, uh, the, uh, this particular region, that is the root hair region, and through these root hairs, they may come out again in the soil environment. So this is the process. This is called as rhizophagy cycle. Um, uh, in this uh, cycle, actually, the endophytes, they penetrate uh, through the root tissues because uh, uh, somehow the, these endophytes uh, they, they uh, not remain, I mean, they are giving uh, uh, seedling formation, um, may or may not be some of the endophytes are there within the plant or not, but sometimes uh, from soil environment, some of the endophytes, they actually uh, enters into the uh, plants. So it is one of the uh, possible uh, theory that uh, in this way, uh, the endophytes, they penetrate the plant tissues. And uh, this is one of the example that uh, what we have found that the bacteria actually they penetrate uh, in this uh, tiny root region, the root hair cells, where you can found that several bacterial cells are there. So this cloud of bacteria within the root tissue indicates that they are not uh, doing any uh, anything wrong within those uh, tissues and. Uh, 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 there is a uh, actual mutualistic relationship among uh, these bacteria and the uh, uh, plant cells. Now, uh, the application of uh, these endophytes, uh, actually uh, people, they are in search of uh, uh, the microorganisms uh, which uh, have some uh, biotechnological potential. So considering that, uh, already we know that uh, soil environment, the uh, uh, soil environment already being uh, explored for different microorganisms uh, for production of different components. So people are in search of a new uh, niche where from they will get uh, some unique microorganism. Uh, those can uh, contribute in different, uh, 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 different product formation. And for that, they actually select uh, uh, the plants from these, uh, they actually uh, uses these three approaches uh, by which they actually uh, select uh, the plants. And uh, first one is the plants from a distinct environmental setting uh, have uh, the possibility that that plant may possess some unique microorganism uh, with that particular plant. Plants with ethnobotanical history may have uh, uh, the chance to uh, give uh, some unique endophytic microorganism. And some plants, uh, those which are uh, producing uh, bioactive natural products, uh, then from that particular plants also, chances of uh, getting some unique microorganism uh, that have the ability to produce those kind of uh, uh, natural products, uh, uh, product formation uh, will be there. Uh, so uh, these are some unique environments. We know that giant uh, baobab uh, tree, 
these are uh, actually found in uh, Madagascar region of Africa, where uh, this particular plant, it has uh, some unique features and they are surviving uh, their uh, huge uh, plant growth uh, is uh, found in that uh, dry um, territory. Uh, so how they survive there? Uh, or the spiny forest in southern Madag Madagascar or this, uh, this Karao River uh, plant what we are uh, getting this particular plant uh, is remain there uh, within the um, aquatic environment and there is a, a huge uh, water current still they are surviving there uh, that, that means uh, they are surviving on that particular environment maybe some endophytes are there within those plants they are giving them uh, some uh, survival benefits so uh, that, that's uh, the uh, one approach and uh, another approach I uh, told you a uh, few minutes before that uh, some plants, if they are producing uh, some uh, particular uh, chemical, so chances will be there that they, that uh, particular plant may harbor some uh, endophyte which may produce uh, that particular uh, component also. An uh, example is we know uh, that uh, taxol, one of the most uh, important uh, anti cancer agent, and this taxol is produced uh, from Texas brevifolia. And this Texas brevifolia, it has a particular habitat. Uh, it is generally found in um, uh, Indo-Tibetan uh, plateau. Uh, this particular plant, you know, from this particular plant, whenever we have collected this uh, taxol, then actually uh, uh, the amount of taxol production was uh, limited so that if uh, thousands of uh, plants were actually cut down to get uh, that particular uh, 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 bioactive component. So uh, scientists think that if we, uh, are, if we are able to uh, find out any microorganism there within this uh, Texas plant, uh, chances will be there that uh, that microorganism may produce uh, this taxon and they are successful. And they found one of the fungus here. You can see that particular fungus that's, that is Taxomyces andriani. This Taxomyces andriani, when it was cultured in uh, uh, liquid medium, uh, within uh, seven days of culture, it is able to produce that uh, taxon. And that uh, after uh, the uh, recovery of taxol from this particular fungus, actually uh, a new uh, new uh, uh, way of uh, uh, research, it actually uh, comes out. Uh, till date, what are different uh, uh, products uh, being, uh, uh, being uh, reported from endophytic microorganisms? These are uh, some of the components. They produce uh, antibiotics. They are uh, 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 bioactive components are being used as antibiotics, antiviral components, and then uh, volatile antibiotics. I will discuss uh, later uh, about this volatile antibiotic. Then endophytic fungi, they produce anti-cancer agent. Uh, they produce antioxidants. Uh, they produce insecticidal components. All these are being reported, and uh, they are now, uh, some of these components are being um, exploited commercially also. They are producing anti-diabetic agents. They are producing immunosuppressive components. Uh, and the latest one is the production of uh, diesel components. Uh, so one by one, I am uh, giving uh, these examples. This is uh, Ucidin A and chlorinated macrocyclic lactone. This is actually the product of a uh, bacteria, Seracea marcescens. It was actually isolated from an aquatic plant uh, uh, from uh, the uh, southwest Venezuela. Uh, this, uh, uh, in this particular harass aquatic environment, how that particular plant survives, uh, 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 somehow uh, the endophytes uh, present within that particular plant, they are contributing uh, in the chances of uh, production of uh, some wounds are there in that particular plant. And during wound formation, uh, uh, infection on that particular wounds will be there. But this oocyte, uh, oocyte in A, 
these actually uh, uh, helping that uh, particular plant to uh, uh, survive uh, from those uh, pathogenic microorganisms. Then it is another component, the, the uh, cryptokandin A, a antifungal peptide. Uh, it was actually uh, isolated from uh, Cryptosporiopsis quarsiana, uh, an imperfect stage of uh, uh, pedicula, you all know. And this fungus was actually uh, isolated from a cardinal species uh, from Europe. Uh, the uh, 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 plant was uh, uh, Tryptericum uh, olfari. Uh, actually, from this particular plant, this uh, antifungal uh, peptide was isolated. Then another one is ambuic acid. This is a cyclohexanone uh, uh, produced by Pestalotiopsis uh, microspora, and it was also uh, isolated from a rainforest plant. And this ambuic acid, it is actually used uh, uh, as an um, uh, antiviral agent. Then uh, from uh, Fusarium, uh, that Fusarium was isolated from Selaginella, and uh, it was uh, the plant actually, Selaginella was uh, isolated from Costa Rica, which uh, produces a particular antifungal agent CR377, uh, which is active against Candida albicans. Then uh, plants like Artemisia annua which produces anti-malarial compound. And it was found that endophyte present uh, within uh, them also produces uh, such type of components. Then another uh, uh, um, streptomyces uh, species, uh, it was actually isolated from Grihelia tree, uh, which uh, uh, produces uh, cacodeomycin, a specific type of antibiotic. This is the Grihelia plant from which this particular streptomyces uh, was um, actually isolated and which produces uh, this antibiotic and cacodeomycin. Another antiviral component uh, that is cytonic acid A and cytonic acid B, uh, these were actually isolated from a endophytic fungus, uh, cytonemia. Then uh, about volatile uh, antibiotics, Actually, uh, antibiotics, whenever we take uh, those antibiotics, it enters into our body and it kills uh, the, the, the target microorganism. And after that, uh, in some way, through excretory process, uh, they goes out. But they have some side effects. So, uh, this uh, particular uh, type of uh, antibiotic, that is volatile antibiotic, it was the discovery of Professor Gary Strobel. He once found, uh, uh, was found uh, a particular type of fungus when he kept that particular fungus in a box containing other fungus also in petri dish. Uh, actually, uh, there were several petri dish of different cultures and he kept all those uh, petri plates in a uh, box. And uh, after two days, what he found that excepting a particular fungus, all other petri dish containing fungus were dead. Uh, why uh, that thing happens? Why this particular fungus is surviving there and all others are dead? So he repeated that thing and he found that uh, excepting that particular fungus, all are dead. And he, uh, uh, he actually uh, taken that fungus uh, uh, under microscope but he found that it's a sterile fungus. He named that fungus as muscoid or albus, and that particular uh, muscoid or um, uh, albus, uh, it is a member of Xylariaceae. Uh, 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 actually, he isolated this particular fungus from Cinnamomum uh, gilaricum, uh, from cinnamon tree. He actually isolated that one. And this particular fungi, when uh, it grows, it produces different esters and acids of um, esters and acids which are uh, antimicrobial in nature and uh, as because these are esters and acids they uh, after some times they uh, as their volatile part is also uh, uh, less so uh, they goes uh, uh, out from that particular region so he named these as uh, volatile uh, antibiotic. 
uh, endophiles, uh, they produce an anti-cancer agent. Uh, I have already told uh, you that uh, Taxol was uh, isolated from Taxomyces andriani, respectively Taxol, uh, uh, which was actually uh, um, collected this Taxomyces andriani is, it, uh, is an endophyte of Taxus brevifolia. Then another one is Torainic acid, a selectively cytotoxic quinone dimer. It was isolated from um, Pseudomonas uh, microspora, uh, which was originally isolated from Taxomyces uh, taxifolia, another plant. Uh, so both of these components are uh, anti-cancer agents. Uh, they are also producing uh, antioxidants. Uh, different antioxidant components are uh, reported uh, till date. They are producing uh, uh, insecticidal components also. Uh, here you can see that one of the endophytes, Nodulisporium, uh, it was from, uh, isolated from Bonsia uh, daphnoides. Uh, it produces uh, that uh, insect repellent component and uh, some of these components are also insecticidal. Anti-diabetic component that is L873281. Uh, this particular metabolite was isolated from uh, Pseudomasharia species. Then uh, immunosuppressive components are also reported from uh, different endophytes. And uh, this unique one is the micro diesel. So it was also the discovery of uh, that um, that is trouble who uh, who have uh, collected plants uh, from different parts of the world. Uh, actually, he explored uh, different rainforests. Uh, and from those particular rainforest plants, one of the uh, fungus, Geoctavium rosium, it's a uh, uh, electron microscopic image, but electron microscopic uh, image generally gives us uh, uh, black and white uh, photographs here. Uh, it, it, it is actually falsely colored, uh, but whenever it uh, uh, grows in the petri plate, it actually gives a uh, rosy, uh, uh, rose or uh, reddish uh, coloration on the plate. Therefore, it was named as Magliocladium rosium. This endophyte was uh, isolated from Eucryphia uh, 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 perifolia that produces 15 different volatile uh, hydrocarbons. And what he found that most of these hydrocarbons are the components of diesel. So octane is the major component. Still, uh, other than octane, different components are present in diesel. And there are a large component, large number of components are also uh, produced by this geocardium erosium. Then he tried to uh, grow this in uh, artificial uh, liquid culture medium. Um, he uh, is able to uh, collect those components there, but as the amount of that particular uh, uh, amount of that particular uh, uh, diesel component is less, therefore uh, uh, he he was not successful. But uh, one thing that uh, tells us that. Uh, somehow these microorganisms, they may have uh, some role in um, diesel formation uh, because whenever the plant tissues, plants or uh, um, different other tissues, they uh, are buried within the uh, uh, soil for uh, several thousand years, maybe they are endophyte, the endophytes which uh, remain there within those plant tissues, they may be uh, uh, converting uh, those tissue components into uh, diesel components. So it's a, a new way of thinking about uh, and the diesel formation uh, using uh, fungus. Now about uh, our work, what we are doing uh, in our laboratory. Uh, because our, my topic uh, was uh, how endophytes or how uh, plant uh, microbes, they are actually uh, helping uh, human beings. So uh, major uh, focus uh, in our laboratory is on this particular four topics, that is volatile antimicrobials, hexopolysaccharide production from endophytes, enzyme, different enzyme production from these uh, endophytes, and antimicrobial uh, component production. 
this is the basic technique how to uh, isolate endophytes. Just you have to take your plant tissue samples and uh, you have to uh, immerse uh, that particular tissue sample in 70% um, uh, uh, ethanol. Uh, you keep uh, that tissue for a few minutes and after that you have to take it out and uh, dry it out. And then we have to cut that particular tissue into small fragments and we have to place uh, that uh, particular tissue in water agar uh, plate so that if endophytes are there within that plant tissue, they will come out from that particular tissue within this, that agar plate. And from that agar plate, we can transfer that particular tissue, uh, the fungal or bacterial uh, uh, growth actually in a new media uh, um, maybe we use uh, PDA for uh, fungal uh, growth or um, uh, nutrient agar for um, bacterial uh, growth. Um, so, uh, and the technique is like that, uh, then incubation, then transfer into PDA plate for fungus, and then we have to observe that under microscope what kind of fungus that is, and then preparation of liquid culture for production of uh, a particular uh, bioactive component. So these are some of the unique uh, organisms we have found. From Osimum sanctum, we have isolated uh, some unique fungal strains. Uh, we got uh, Alternaria and Penicillium. Uh, then we uh, leave liquid culture, that one. Uh, then um, another fungus that is Halopus. Uh, then Fusarium, it was uh, liquid cultures. Uh, sometimes we got some unidentified fungus also. Their reproductive structures are uh, not actually matching with any of the fungus available in uh, the literature. Then we uh, keep them for uh, actually molecular identification. We send them for molecular identification. And after that, we generally get their uh, identity. So these are different uh, fungal members. This is the unique fungal member. Uh, what I have told you that Muscodor albus, it was the um, it was actually isolated uh, by uh, uh, Gary Strobel from cinnamon plant. And uh, when I traveled uh, his lab, he told me that you may get uh, some of the uh, muscular alvas in your country also. Uh, you just try there whether you are getting any uh, muscular or not. But you have uh, uh, to collect your plants from uh, the rainforest region. Then what I think that uh, in our country, we have these are the particular areas where uh, we can get rainforest. Then I travel to uh, a particular region that is Meghalaya, uh, Mololong uh, village, you all know. Uh, from the, there, I have collected this uh, piper plant. Actually, I have collected several uh, hundreds of different plants. And uh, uh, luckily, I have uh, isolated one uh, mascot species. It was named as uh, Mo uh, 12. This Muscoda species actually, uh, it resembles uh, in structure with the earlier um, isolates. Uh, it produces uh, some sterile uh, hypha and uh, this sterile hypha produces some, uh, uh, some, some aggregate of uh, tissues, some unique tissues. And after uh, molecular identification, what I have found that uh, it is a muscular species which have a close similarity with other uh, muscular species uh, isolated till that. And these uh, muscular species, it produces a lot of uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, uh, volatile components. The major component though was uh, ethanol, but it produces uh, ethyl ester of acetic acid, uh, then uh, pro propanol, then uh, um, uh, methyl ester of propanoic acid, internal, all these different components, these are uh, in aggregate, they uh, are antimicrobial uh, in nature. And this is actually the uh, spit uh, plate test. With this uh, spit plate test, whenever you uh, place a muscular or alvas in one half of the plate, if you grow there, and if you place any pathogenic microorganism in another half of the plate, what you will find that in most of the time, this muscular alvas, it 
do not allow those microorganisms to go, go there. As there is no direct uh, or physical contact uh, among these microorganisms, that means uh, no uh, component from this muscular species is diffusing uh, uh, towards uh, those uh, microorganisms because there is a channel, so no chances will be there uh, that something is diffusing from there. So somehow, some volatile components, they are contributing in this, uh, uh, in this process. And uh, our muscular species, muscular alvas, it is able to uh, kill most of the plant pathogenic uh, fungal strains. Here, uh, different uh, plant pathogens uh, we have uh, used, we have tested in uh, sclerotonia, uh, pythium, geotrichium, botrytis, it kills almost all of them, excepting fusarium, trichoderma, and aspergillus. In these three cases, it inhibits them, but their inhibition is a percentage-wise, it inhibits 100% uh, uh, aspergillus, uh, in case of aspergillus, and 40% uh, in case of fusarium, but it is unable to kill them. That, that means their growth is somehow uh, suppressed. We have published that one. Uh, then another one, uh, another fungus, uh, this is not muscular, but this is Dallinia bambushicola. It was actually uh, uh, isolated from another plant from Northeast. And uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, fungus was isolated from Camellia caduca. This, uh, from this plant, uh, we have isolated this one and during plate, uh, split uh, plate test, what we have found that it is also uh, inhibiting different uh, microorganisms, not killing, but it is also uh, inhibiting uh, different pathogenic microorganisms. And uh, this is the electron microscopic photograph of this Dalvinian bambushical. And when we did gas test for this particular uh, microorganism, uh, what we have found, the different components it is producing are antimicrobial in nature, and among these, uh, these two components, linalol oxide and linalol, these two components, they have a sweet uh, fragrance. That means uh, whenever we grow that particular fungus, it actually pr produces a sweet smell there, and uh, so uh, my possibilities are there that we may use this uh, microorganism to clean the air as well as uh, to get a good uh, meal also. And uh, we did uh, the, this uh, particular test. Uh, we have uh, placed uh, uh, um, some of the fruits and vegetables in a uh, cardboard box. And we placed this Dalinia bambushicola uh, culture in a half of uh, this particular uh, uh, half of the box and uh, whenever uh, in control when we have not uh, given any uh, the linear bambushicola culture in those particular boxes what we have found their spoilage uh, uh, happens earlier than the experimental one where they are actually uh, self life is extended for few days whenever we use this one. This indicates that uh, actually uh, 